In this video, we're going to focus on creating a rainfall chart where you can see here we have two axes here showing here the values having this combination of a bar and a line chart all together nicely shown. So let's start to explore how we can create something like this. In this video, we'll focus on one of the viewers question, which is how to make a rainfall chart in Chart.js. So this question came from one of my videos here from one of the viewers. It was on this specific video here about Chart.js dynamic range input, which is quite interesting as well. So if you scroll down here, you'll find this from uh, Rokibu Haig. And Rokibu asked the following. Thanks for the quickest response and effort. It would be very appreciated if you could make some rainfall chart tutorials. All right. So I replied here and at that time I thought it was a waterfall chart. But of course, these are different items. So now I'm going to continue making a rainfall chart, which is also quite fun to make. So let's start and work on that right now. First of all, what I want you to do is to go to chartgs3.com, getting started, to get the default code. And if you want to understand what this code does, this is the video that explains all the code that I'm, that I'm using here. So I'm going to copy this. And once I copy that, I'll paste this in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the title in here. All right. So once I have this, save this and refresh. So what are we going to do? To make a rainfall chart, we're going to use two parts. First of all, we need a um, line bar combination chart. Secondly, we need to have two axes on here, on this side and on the other side. So let's start to work with one of them first. All right, so what we're going to do first is convert our chart here into a combo chart, which is a bar line chart. To do this, we need two data sets here and we need to do some adjustments. So I'm going to just copy this entire data set, put in here comma, paste this in here and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some adjustments here. All right, so what is the adjustments? We're going to, uh, this item here will be based on the temperature. So we have two items, we have the temperature, basically here, temperature in Celsius. And then we have this one here. This will be the uh, the rainfall, or basically the uh, precipitation in millimeters. All right. And what we're going to do here is we're going to give this a color. So I'm going to say this one will be the upper one. That is a nice red color. So I'm going to remove everything here and remove that. All right. And do the same here, including the brackets, because we don't need an array. Since this is a line, this we will be removing. We'll just change it into tension. So it will be an elastic line. Let's say 0 0.4. Then we put in here comma. And then basically what we're going to do here, we say type equals a line chart. So basically this item, we're moving away. So we're going to delete this. And then we're going to put it here exactly the same. We have here the, the precipitation. And what we need here then is, well, what I will do is I will get the last color, which is a dark black color. I'm going to keep that one in there. All right, comma. Then I'm going to, I can just delete all of this. Just copy this one here. Make sure this is 0 0.2 for the background color. And this can be a border with, we can make a border with two. That will be fine. And we put a comma here and then we say your type equals bar. All right, make sure this is a string value. If we save this now, let's see if the outcome is desirable. There it is. All right. So we have an outcome here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just change these into month. And then we're going to change these values as well. Uh, but you will see here, we're going to put in higher values for the millimeter or the precipitation because there's probably more rain. So what we're going to do is we have temperature and this. So I'm going to just play around with it quickly and you can do it as well. So I say here, this will be zero. Oh, we're going to make this one first. Let's say here, January, Feb, March. May of April and then May of course June July and then I'm just going to put in here the others August September October comma November and finally December so we have 12 labels in here all right 
So once we have this, we have here, of course, we need here the same item. So I will say 3, 6, 9, I mean this 12, 15, and 18, and then here we have 21, and then, then we are going again here, let's say 24, and then finally we're going down, we'll make this 18, 15, and then how many we have? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, all right, so two more. Then we make this 12 or yeah you know, that's fine and then finally here we make this six all right so we have the temperature here so for the rain precipitation i am not really an expert in this so i don't know what the monthly rain would be but let's assume the following we're going to make it 20 for let's make it 30 60 now we have 45 and then we have again 60 and then we have 90 and then we have 120 and then we have again 90 and then we're going back here to 60 and 45 and 30 so let's see we have now here four four and we're still missing one and finally here again 30 all right so we've got all of this beautiful if i save this now you can see oh we're missing one item here sorry and this one will be 30, I guess this should be maybe 60, there we So now we have all of these here. All right, so this looks all beautiful, but you can see this of course doesn't match and the, the line here is not correct. So what we have to do is we have to split now the item into two separate calculations where you have one y-axis here and the other y-axis here. And what I want to do is I want this line to be here on this side. All right, and later on I will explain why we have the structure as we have it right now. All right, so what we're going to do here is basically this. We need to indicate here the following. We're going to say here the y axis ID, and then we're going to assign a value here. We can say here right dash y dash axis. All right, so once we have this one, that will be for the right side and then we have another one for the left side here if i save this now it does nothing at all yet so don't worry about it. you can see all these grid lines and everything don't worry because we have right now not assigned the position of it so to do this we need to go here to the scales and basically with the scales we have this part the y-axis now can be removed or at least this part here i'll just comment this out because we might need to have this begin at zero we might use that somewhere so what we're going to do now is the following. We're going to pinpoint first the left one, and then we're going in the left one, we will just assign which one will stay left, and afterwards we're going to assign which one will stay right. So what we're going to do here for the left one, we'll say here, uh, in the scales, this is a quotation here, because this is a string value, we're going to get this. And then we say that, and we have that, all right. And then we say type. So the type here is linear comma and then we say here the position so where do we want to position the scale right now now in this case we want to position the scale at the left side so that's why we have this left here but you could use it anything you, it could be rainfall whatever you want it can be anything you want as long as these two are identical with each other all right so once we have this the next thing what i want to do here is um well we can just keep this for now and I'm going to just copy this specific part, paste it in here, and then in here we just put in here the right side. So once we have this one, we can save that. Oh, what happened? Right, yes. And then we save this, and we oh, and this of course must be right. Save that. Refresh. Let's see what I am mistaken or forgot. It's 82. All right, we have here 82. We have here this and we have here that. All right, so this is of course not what we need. Why? Because we already have this one here and this is the closing one. All right, so now if I save this, this should work correctly. So there we are. So we have here our nice line chart now or our chart is here matching with the right side of the axis. The left side have the participation or uh, sorry, precipitation. That's the right term. The precipitation of the rain in millimeters. So what we can do now is because we see these grid lines here and it's absolutely horrible. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove it. And what we want to do here, just to be sure, 
we can put in the line here forcing it on zero uh, let's see the right side we just put in this begin at zero and the reason why is that maybe that these values here but if we would have higher values here it might remove that one so we have this this is to force it at zero at the starting point and then now what we're going to do is we're going to you see the side already has removed that other line and then we're going to remove this grid line here because this grid line is not nice because we have a double grid line here delete this next thing we're going to do here comma and then we say here the following we're going to say here grid because basic grid because basically this is just like the x or the y value where you can put in grid lines display and then we say hide or what is it am i am i correct it's display false if i'm not mistaken save this refresh so now you can see the grid lines has been removed so we only have one grid line so pay attention here this 20 is not this line here it should be somewhere here so it's not 100 percent accurate or matching here but uh, it is more pleasing on the eye or aesthetically more nicer all right, so we have this here now, we have all of these. What I want to do here is basically the following. We're going to put in here on the side the text here, so we know which side is related to the rain and which side is related to the temperature. So what we're going to do here now is the following. We just put in here a comma, and then we say here title, and in here we're going to say the title will be display true, because we have a title, and then the title name or the title text will be what is the title text for the right side here this is the right side so we get this specific label text all right and then we can copy this we're going to put it for the left side as well paste it in here but this here needs to be changed to precipitation in millimeters all right paste it in here save refresh all right so we have this now so one thing i want to point out more and this is maybe because you look at this and you might say well isn't it more more logical just to start from the left side and then the right normally i would say yes but this is the reason why i didn't do this so i'm going to move this now you have an understanding here what happens because chart.js draws this based on layers so if we move this it means that this will be drawn first and afterwards this so if i save that here refresh and then you can see here um or basically what i noticed sorry this one is being drawn afterwards for this one but what happens is the line here is being overlapped so this is at the background here and i don't want this and the reason i don't want this is just the line should be the most visible and the bar here because this one is very clear on where the value eventually lies but this line here should be more uh visual for that we're going to move that back here up so this is the reason why i did this is just to make sure that we draw first or we draw the last line and basically or the line is on top and this one is behind the line i guess i'm not sure which one draws first but it's basically on layers and basically the bar the bar here this one this gets a higher priority because it's shown first that's why you can see this here nicely and clearly well, just when you move it in a different way, the bar lines are shown or overlapping the, the red line here. So that's basically what we did here. And this is how you create a nice rain chart with two axes and a combo bar line chart together. So if you enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend you to try to export this video as well. And this video is about creating a unique effect in a line chart here with different colors based on the values if the value or the line is going down it becomes red and if it goes up it becomes green a quite challenging one but also wonderful to see so the link will pop up here somewhere you will see the link right now